Today is a big day for the cycling industry when Shimano launched a new product, The World Takes Notice. And they've invited the great and the good of the cycling media world and also GCN to come and see what they think is going to be one of their biggest product launches in a number of years. So we have Julie come to Northern France to see what they've got in store for us. And you are coming too. Not only are you going to get to see what the product is, you're also going to get to see what a product launch is all about. Should we go take our place in the auditorium? Okay, here we go. That was a pretty spectacular start. Now we've seen spy shots of that bike before, but in the flesh, that looked absolutely amazing. Does it justice, certainly. A very warm welcome uh, here uh, to join us uh, here at Shimano. Uh, I'm Anthony McCrossan. I'm going to be your host for the next hour or so as we get uh, ready to launch and uh, to say uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. We're just getting a little bit of a history lesson now about Durace. This latest group set is going to be the 10th generation of it. It goes right back to the 70s. My first one, 2003. And then I remember this one quite clearly. So the evolution of uh, Durace has gone in cycles and today we stand proudly as we reveal this new group set. Well, let's take a look uh, at things that have happened uh, as we present to you the new R9100 Durace group set. To give you lots more detail, please welcome Tim Gerrits. Okay, so this guy is the Shimano Euro product development manager. Very cool guy. He's going to give us all the information we need. Uh, that we are able to launch today. I start off with the platform of the bicycle we call the drivetrain. The drivetrain is the basis of every group set. You can have the best brake or the best shifting possible, but it's all based on the drivetrain, the, the heart of the bike. For this, we start off with the crankset. The new crankset, as you can see here, um, take the engineering direction that we launched at the previous generation with the asymmetric forearm, but we went a step further. We analyzed the power uh, transfer from the crank arms to the bike, and you can see the distinctive um, asymmetrical shape here. With this we were able to keep the same level of stiffness as the crank currently has, but reduce the, the weight even more. So we re-engineered the chain rings so you can reach a chainstay length without any sacrifice of shifting performance of 410 millimeter, so a race-ready bike. Beside the normal crank set that we bring, the traditional one, I'm very proud to present that we bring an optional crank set with an integrated power measurement system, a very advanced system. Here you can see the actual product and it's actually completely hidden and that's what proves that it's integrated. The only thing you'll see is this small control unit here that has an LED that shows you um, if the battery, the integrated rechargeable battery is powered, if the system is on, you can calibrate it, and there's a magnetic charging port right there. The next essential part of the drivetrain is the cassette. We didn't change so much technology-wise, 
But what you can see here is that we will add now for the first time in Dura's level an 1130 cassette. Okay, okay, so this one with the cassette. Really interesting. They've clearly been listening the to their pro teams the, the, because they've the produced an 11 to 30 Durex cassette that's compatible with the standard rear derailleur, so no more bodging with Altegra DI2 for their pro teams. Very interesting. We will bring two new platforms of uh, road wheels, one on a 40 millimeter rim height and one on a 60 millimeter rim height. Both are the same width. So it's easier for teams to exchange wheels depending on the circumstances and choose the best weapon for each race. <laughs> Talk about the actual product, the C60 platform. We will bring, of course, in a tubular for the races, but we will also bring a full carbon clincher style tubeless for disc brake, and we will match the existing uh, carbon laminated for a rim brake version into this program. That leads me to the shifting interface. As said, a shifting interface can only be as good as the mechanical platform that's underneath uh, supporting this, uh, this, uh, this shifting interface, and that is system engineering to make it work together in the best way. So I start off with the DI2 interface, the electronic shifting interface. For this, the first challenge was our benchmark STI, the one most of the teams are using, is the Dura-Ace DI2 one. As we come up with hydraulic disc brakes, the challenge was how to make that STI for the hydraulic disc brake matching exactly the same shape as far as we could, building in a reservoir as the mechanical braking system in order to have racers change from bike to bike without getting adapted to the feel of the STI and the position they have on the bike. And with the layover sheet that I show here, you see we more or less uh, made it for uh, to have exactly the same volume and same position for the rider if he um, decides to change or to ride both bikes during the season. We had one challenge, how to control front and rear shifting. You have to have many buttons on the bike so a rider is able to control his shifting from any position. So what we did is we used the technology that we introduced in mountain biking called synchronized shifting to this type of riding as an option. What does it mean? It means that by our eTube app, you're able to make a complete mapping of how you want your derailleurs to shift. So it means that if you ship, shift up or down, you go through the whole range of the bike's gear range. Front shifting will happen automatically on the point where you program it to happen. If you want to run all through the cassette and then it shifts in the front, then the next shift is a front shift. It compensates in the rear automatically one or two gears. So you can, can seamlessly go to the entire range of your bicycle's gears uh, without any shifting shock. The rear derailleurs and the front derailleurs, you can see as well following the same technology as on the, um, the, the DI2 side, you will see the direct mount uh, uh, hanger and also this is a shadow type so it is positioned underneath the bike itself one specification to cover all the cassettes and we completely re-engineered the front derailleur in the previous generation we um, if you may remember we um, did also re-engineer the front derailleur and with a very long arm to make it much smoother and much more controllable but with a change of wider tires, shorter chain stays, in some cases this was conflicting with <coughs> the bike frames. So we challenged our engineers to make this one better and less troublesome for different applications and very aerodynamic and complex frames. They came up with a new mechanism, which is a toggle mechanism, so it's an internal mechanism. It's very compact, it's very small, and it works just as smooth as the long arm type. So it gives you much more clearance, it's compact, and it's less sensitive. Brake systems, also there are big changes. Um, as I said already, we will add disc brakes, uh, race-ready disc brakes to our brake options. But here you can see our proposal for this. A completely new rotor that was uh, 
established after long testing with better heat dissipation because in generally the issue for on-road hydraulic disc, disc brake is not so much extra power like what you have on a mountain bike but the controllability so the how constant the brake feel is uh, depending on how long you ride it or what temperature it reaches so the alloy core the sandwich construction now extends all the way to the spider of the actual um, uh, rotor. This allows more heat to dissipate directly to uh, the air instead of going into the brake system. But we didn't give up on developing a rim brakes neither. Here you can see our new improved rim brake. You can see that it's more integrated, more sleek design, more aerodynamic. But the biggest change is that we made it compatible for 28C tyres. Uh, rim brake calipers also seeing a bit of adjustment. 43% stiffer and that's going to really help your braking. That's the end of my part, Anthony. Thank you very much. So we're going to uh, welcome now uh, some of our representatives of our professional teams who are going to give us a little bit more insight as to how they work with Shimano. So Carsten, also we've, we see disc brakes as, a, as an integral part of, of this new group set. What's your thoughts on the introduction of uh, disc brakes finally into Shimano stable as far as Durace is concerned? I think it was a part that had to be there. Obviously there's, there's been it has been a big topic in the pro world uh, this year. I, I, I still believe that it can be done, uh, and I think it's coming. So yeah, no, it should be there. Why not? And Matthew, your feelings on disc brakes? Yeah, like Carsten said, it's now uh, there's, a, there's some discussion on it, but it's true, it has to be there. And I think with Shimano, we are ready to have it when it's allowed again. Fred, just coming to you then, one of the things that we've seen in Tim's presentation is the, is the power meter uh, coming into uh, this new group set. Were you involved in, in the development of, of this power meter alongside the Shimano, the Shimano guys? Yes, uh, I think it's a very, very interesting collaboration with the engineer in, in Shimano. And uh, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to have a very relevant and, and good systems to, uh, to, to, to have a measurement of the power. And uh, um, it's very, very important to, to, to test this system in different environmental conditions and uh, also in laboratory uh, to have uh, the possibility to, uh, uh, to, to, to analyze the effect of the temperature, effect of the, the weather, effect of the pedaling cadence. Um, also, the, on the also have to have the the opinion of the riders about the systems. Okay, so the presentation is just winding down now. So I thought we'd skip out just before the question and answer session to see whether or not we can. I probably don't need to whisper now to see whether or not we can find this new group set actually in the flesh. It's here in the building. I know it is. Okay, what do we got here? Look at this. Oh, this is like a treasure trove. That is the evolution of Dura Race. I'm going to spend a lot of time looking at that in a little bit. But where is the new stuff? Here it is. Obviously, the star of the show, the DI2 hydraulic, is downstairs. But this, look at this. Here it is. The new Dura Race R9100 group set. So this is a mechanical rim brake version, and that is a very nice looking group set. Stylistically, you can see the mountain bike influence quite clearly, I think. Obviously, you've got the shadow rear derailleur there. So we can see it is indeed much more in line with the frame, as they told us in the presentation. Those cranks, look how big those cranks are. That's super cool. Very nice indeed. And then the STIs. How small are they now, the cable actuated ones? That's pretty good, that is pretty good. Now obviously, the DI2 bike is downstairs. That looks like prototype version. So this is a hydraulic DI2 lever. That is ridiculously small. Clearly, they have achieved their goal of getting them to feel the same as the standard DI2 rim brake version. That is very cool. And then the other thing that I took from that presentation downstairs was the ability to shorten the chain stays. And so here we've got like, a disc brake bike and that, the clearance between the seat tube and the tyre is tiny. So those chain stays are indeed 
super short looking. And so that's all down to changing the chainring profile. And that presumably is one of their prototypes there. That's amazing. Right, I want to see the new rotors because those are not them. And I can see a display stand over here. But look at that. How cool is that disc rotor? Hey, quick, come and have a look at this. Check this out. This, I think, despite all the technological advancements, is my favourite part of the whole group set. It's the front derailleur. Look how neat that is. So that is the new redesigned internal cam mechanism. That's so neat. And look, there's the cable tension adjustment as well. Now, I hope you have enjoyed seeing the new Dura Ace 9100 and behind the scenes as well, half as much as I've enjoyed seeing it as well. But there will, of course, be more information on the group set coming up very soon indeed. And so the chances are that by the time you finish watching this, if you click just up there, you will get through to a detailed first look because I'm just going to nip off and grab a bike for myself right now. But in the meantime, if you want to see more tech on GCN, then check out our playlist, which is just down there. All the videos in one handy spot. And then do make sure you subscribe to GCN as well. To do that, just click on the globe.